thank you very much indeed, and I'm delighted to be here to talk about uh, Town and Gown in Cork, Bridging the Gap, and how University College Cork bridges and has bridged the gap between Town and Gown. University College Cork has some wonderful facilities, as you can get some idea of them here. We have the Granary Theatre, we have the Glucksmann uh, Art Gallery, we have music facilities, we have science labs, right across the spe spectrum. A fantastic university, a lovely campus, and a campus of which the city is proud. The university was founded in 1845, it's 167 years old now, and it has always been very much part of the community of Cork. Cork, as many of you know, is uh, a medium-sized city in the south of Ireland with a population of about a quarter of a million in the immediate conurbation. And it's a nice size of a city to have a university interacting and working with the community. And that indeed is what happens in University College Cork. Our role, our mission as a university, as is the role and mission of universities throughout the world, is threefold. We are engaged in research and scholarship, in teaching and learning, and in engagement with the external community. And those three interla interlapping functions define our role as a university. And I like the work of Ernest Boyer, who in in 1990, expanded that role somewhat and engaged a bit with it. He said, yes, of course, universities are engaged in scholarship, but how do we define scholarship? What's the nature of that scholarship? He talks about the interactive scholarships of discovery, teaching, engagement, and integration. Discovery, teaching, engagement, and then integration. And he sees it as a dynamic view of the nature of scholarship. And this has, of course, broadened our role and our responsibilities in society. So the nature of the engagement can be very broad, and that's something we will talk a bit more about later. So the obvious uh, engagement with business and industry, and this engagement is reflected in the composition of the governing body of the university, where there are representatives of business and industry, representatives of the civic life of the community. Public policy is a focus of university life. We are very much involved with the artistic, the cultural, and the sporting life of the city. And we work closely with other educational providers in the city broadly, both in the formal education system and in the non-formal system. And of course, like other Irish universities, we have considerable engagement with international partners, including developing countries. So to quote our own Irish national strategy for higher education, the multidimensional nature of many of the social, economic, and civic challenges means that they require multidisciplinary approaches. And higher education institutions are uniquely placed to lead, develop, and apply these in partnership with others. So that interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary approach is what so is so uh, available in a university uh, environment. Civic engagement, very important part of our role as academics and also the role of our students. And we should, whenever the opportunity arises, encourage them to be civically engaged with uh, various enterprises in the city and in the community. And so all aspects of the mission of Irish higher education, teaching, research, and civic engagement must be pursued with an enthusiastic commitment to innovation and excellence. I'm going to talk a little bit then about teaching and learning, which since this was the area in which I spent most of my professional life, and when my 16 years as professor of education at University College Cork, I saw the exciting opportunities that existed for us as a, an academic community and a student community to interact with schools and learning communities throughout Cork uh, in a way that enabled us to be both providers and supporters, but also to be learners and to learn ourselves from what we saw in the community. And in my, uh, the way I saw it was the schools of Cork were the laboratory for myself, 
for my colleagues and for those of us who had an interest in teaching and learning. Because by working with the school principals, with the teachers, with the students, at primary and second level, and eventually even in early childhood settings, we learned so much about how children learn and how we as academics could improve our approach to teaching and learning. And one of the projects with, with which I was involved, the Bridging the Gap project, where we bridged the gap, if you like, between communities and schools which did not have a tradition of interacting with the universities, those in less advantaged areas, that was a really exciting seven-year project for which we got funding both from national public sources and from philanthropic, both local and international philanthropic sources. And the opportunity for us as academics to visit those schools, to work with the schools and the teachers and the parents, and in turn to see them blossoming and developing, and to try and support them in areas like, for example, building a school orchestra, building up uh, some, uh, uh, an artistic community, building drama in their schools. They particularly uh, uh, appreciated the opportunity to work with the university in the area of the arts and culture. And then as well in the science area. And my colleagues in the science department and particularly in the science education area have done and continue to do a really important work in the area of improving the scientific literacy of young people in schools in Cork. Community partnerships, you can envisage how many community partnerships and the opportunities that exist for developing community partnerships. Recognizing that greater engagement and partnership between higher education institutions and community and voluntary groups offers significant potential to progress equality and community development and to further social innovation. And I know my colleagues, my many colleagues shared with me the conviction that those of us who had been privileged enough to, in the past to have access to higher education, we should use every opportunity to open the pathways to those who's, who traditionally had been less privileged. And that was why my decision was, during my day, to spend whatever additional energies and, and finances that we had working with less uh, advantaged communities. Obviously, the university is also involved in other areas of partnership, for example, industry academic partnerships. Some of those, these are quite obvious, and they range widely from knowledge transfer, the creation of joint research projects, to the development and provision of education and training for employees, and problem solving and consultancy services. And many, many areas of the university can engage in that type of work. And of course, the other side of the coin, the university can benefit from those industry academic partnerships because it provides an opportunity to facilitate high quality internships and work placements for students. And so it's always worth looking at all these partnerships as a win-win, both sides wins. And I think for all of us, it's very valuable to think more broadly. What else could we do? What else could the university do to improve the link between town and gown to uh, bridge the gap even more than we are currently doing. Some universities across the world, in fact many of them, actually give credits to their students for community engaged uh, partnerships and work. Um, we don't do that quite as much in UCC and I think there's huge opportunity there for embedding uh, civic engagement, social involvement, even voluntary teaching in the actual programs for credit. And there are many good examples of that type of work in other universities across Ireland and in other countries. So really, it's a challenge to us. Think outside the box. And indeed, the work of the Granary Theatre, for example, with the music department in UCC, with the Van Burra Quartet, in providing opportunities for furthering music education and music engagement in the community is a good example of that. And just finally, to finish up, it's very important that the commitment to community engagement is embedded in the university's strategic plan. We need to have an institution-wide commitment so that, of course, we know that there are many, many individual academics who are very involved, uh, working in a most committed way in various ways with the community. But 
it's time for us to move forward and to make sure that that commitment is not confined to individual academics or projects, but that it should embrace all aspects of, of university life. Uh, research, students as well as academics, the full range of support services, and all of our universities need to develop strategies to guide their engagement with wider society in a structured and planned way, to manage themselves accordingly, and to work with external partners to gauge their success. And research carried out in relation to community engagement in Ireland generally does uh, indicate that industry and business sometimes find it difficult to bridge the gap with their university uh, higher education partners. They talk about the difficulty of engaging with the language of the university. So we've got to look at all these issues and really work at this institution-wide commitment. So the kind of um, characteristics that one requires uh, for an institution-wide commitment, strong institutional leadership and a strategic commitment to uh, to community and engagement. And this may mean a change in the culture and internal business processes of the university to, to be more transparent, to be more open, and to be more welcoming to the various aspects of community life to ensure that they feel welcome and uh, valued by the university. And of course, in turn, We'd love to see, from the point of view of engaging and encouraging academics, we, we really meet, need to be sure that those academics who are committed to such uh, engagement with the, the outs, with the external world, that they are rewarded and recognised for it, that the promotions criteria recognise it, that their resource allocation recognises it, and that the metrics used to assess individual pro Pro, uh, progress, institutional progress at national and international level take account of that third pillar, the pillar of engagement. Thank you very much.